If you want to run a powerful amplifier, you need a strong electrical system. So in this video, we're going to be installing this Mechman alternator and this Big 3 kit that I got from Hi-Fi Vega. In addition to installing those upgrades, I'm going to share some information that you might need to know if you plan on upgrading your alternator. This is just the first step in a big project. My long-term goal is to remove the back seat in my pickup truck so that I can have some room for some serious bass in my daily driver. That's going to include the installation of this JP23 amplifier, which has been dyno tested and verified to put out over 3,000 watts. To do that, I'd like to replace this stock alternator with a high output version. And before I do that, I need to wipe down this filthy engine bay. Okay, that's a whole lot better. So the first step is to disconnect the negative battery terminal. That way we don't short anything out while we're working under the hood. It's probably a good idea to go ahead and remove the positive terminal and pull the battery since we're going to need access to the battery tray a little bit later in the video. Keep watching so you can see what I do with that. Now in this truck, the alternator is hiding out underneath this big plastic air box right here in the middle. To get to it, you've got to pull off the air filter cover, which is just held in place with some clips, and then this intake pipe, which is held in place with some clamps. And there are two bolts holding on the air box, one on each side of the enclosure and there's a sensor on the back that has to be removed as well. Then you just lift up on it and it pops right off. And of course, with that airbox off, you have easy access to the top of the alternator and the positive stud for the alternator is located right up on the top. Next, you wanna remove the belt. This tool right here is not 100% necessary, but I went ahead and picked it up when I got the belt. This is uh, intended to get into tight spaces made specifically to adjust the tensioner pulley. So if you look down, the alternator is here and the tensioner pulley is the most outermost pulley over here. And so you just put it on the nut Give it a little downward pressure and you can see the tension on the belts loosening and you should be able to just pop the belt off of the alternator. All right, just two little clips right here. Remove this plastic cover. To get the alternator out of the vehicle, you've got to remove three bolts. Now this aftermarket alternator is supposed to be a drop-in replacement for pretty much any 4.7 liter Dodge, Ram, Chrysler, or Jeep engine, but it didn't fit. Well, at least it didn't fit at first. As luck would have it, my neighbor from across the street, who turns out to be a fantastic mechanic, popped over to lend a hand and he taught me a few new tricks. All I had to do was thread this bolt on and give it a few light taps with my hammer to spread this out. I won't pop it out, will I? No. All right, that seems to have made a difference. And now the new alternator fits like a glove. I'm always learning new things. It's part of the fun of being a DIYer. And that's why I joined Skillshare, the sponsor of this video. When you're a DIYer, you constantly have to be improving your skills. As an independent content creator, that's especially important for me because I have all these moving parts I have to keep up with, which is why I joined Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes. They even offer classes on things like acoustic and woodworking. Now, I'm not a professional woodworker and I upgraded my skills by watching Michael St. Amy's woodworking classes. I started off with his table saw safety video where he provides a ton of insight into the proper and safe use of a table saw. Skillshare is ad free and they launch new classes every single week. So if you'll check the link down in the description, the first 1,000 people to click on that link and sign up for Skillshare will get a free month of Skillshare. Now to get the alternator in, you just reverse the process. You tighten down the three bolts, reconnect the positive wire, and don't forget there is a little wire harness on the back that you've got to plug into the alternator. So the alternator is in, but we're not done yet. We still need to install the big three kit. And that part turned out to be the most time consuming. One of the big debates with the big three Kit is whether or not you need a fuse between the battery and the alternator. I've always been a fan of adding the fuse. Let's see what my buddy thinks. Okay, then I'd probably go ahead and recommend the fuse. Use it. That was my plan all along. And when it goes, you're glad that it went because right. that was melting the wire. 
Now to install the ground wires, all we've got to do is trace the factory grounds back down to the frame and to the engine block. The one on the frame was really easy to get to, especially from underneath the truck. You can see it here looking down from the top of the engine bay. It was held in place with a 10 millimeter bolt and I removed some paint around it with a Dremel to get a good solid ground to the frame. The engine block ground was a little harder to reach. It's behind and above the oil filter. So you can see there. I'll be darned, yeah. The easiest way for you to see it is to look through the wheel well, but it's easier to reach from under the truck. I'm really not much of a mechanic, so I was really thankful to have a friend that could lend a hand. Turns out all I need to do is hold the camera and have someone who was confident <laughs> do the wrenching. <laughs> <laughs> no, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> it goes without saying that if you ever need a subwoofer box or help with install, I have his back. And hey, if you're not comfortable working on cars, don't be afraid to ask for help. Guys have been building friendships while working on cars for as long as there's been cars. Now that we have those grounds bolted to the vehicle, I'm moving on to the fuse holder. For that, I start with taking a few measurements. The plan is to use some threaded rivet nuts to attach the fuse holder to the factory battery tray. Now that mount for the fuse holders will be made out of quarter inch ABS. And here I am going back and forth between the table saw and the truck to make sure I have a perfect fit. Pop off the blade guard so that I can cut a very shallow groove in the plastic. This groove will make it easier to bend the plastic with a heat gun. I need to cut out a notch to make clearance for the battery hole down. For that, I just make a series of cuts in the plastic and then the remaining pieces will just snap right off. Then you just grab a heat gun and use it to soften the plastic so you can bend it. I like to use the edge of my table to make a perfect 90 degree angle. The best advice I can give you for this step is to grab a pair of heavy leather gloves. <laughs> the plastic gets a little hot. Now it's time to drill some holes. In this shot, you can see that I've already drilled two holes in the tabs at the bottom of this ABS mount. I made these a little bit oversized. That way it'll be easier to line these holes up with the threaded rivets that I inserted in the battery tray on the off chance that my measurements were <laughs> not exactly perfect. I can just throw a big washer on my bolt to make sure that the head doesn't slip through that hole. This battery is about four years old and it's about to die on me. I've ordered some lithium battery and I'm gonna replace this one with an AGM battery when those lithium batteries arrive. I just hope this battery doesn't die on me <laughs> before everything gets in. Now that the fuse holders are in, it's time to insert the wire. Here's a tip for you. Don't forget to slide the end of that fuse holder over the wire before you insert the wire into the fuse holder. We're gonna be putting wire ferrules on all of the connections that go into the fuse holder. And while we're doing that, I wanna say thank you to my patrons with a bonus shout out to Bo, David T, Bam Bam, Dylan, and Baba. For the rest of the connections, we're going to crimp on some lugs with a hydraulic crimper. This may be one of the most frustrating tools that I own you really need two people, one person to hold the wire and one person to operate the crimper. Luckily, I had a buddy around to help out. But it works and it makes fantastic crimps that ain't going nowhere. Ooh, look at there. That is how it's done. A little bit of shrink wrap to tidy everything up and protect the connections. Now, probably one of the hardest parts is actually getting all those connections onto the battery terminals. The positive has three connections, the factory wire, the upgraded wire going to the alternator, and the zero gauge wire running back to the amplifiers. The negative has four connections, the factory wires, which in this case, we probably could have removed, the frame ground, the engine ground, and we added a short body ground as well. With the split loom on the wires, they look absolutely huge. Other than that and the big fuses, everything under the hood looks factory. I've been riding around for about a week with the alternator installed and so far I'm happy with it, but there are some things you need to know before you order one for yourself. Mechman, for example, offers two versions of alternators for this truck. There is a 240 amp model and the 320 amp model that I went with. At low RPM, like say when you're idling, the 240 will actually put out more current. I was originally going to go with the smaller alternator until I spoke to 
Mechman customer support. I was advised to measure the crankshaft pulley. If it was a seven inch pulley, I would have a four to one ratio from the crankshaft to the alternator. And in that case, the 320 would be a better option. But sometimes at idle, I still get some voltage drop. I suspect that getting my batteries upgraded will help smooth out some of those voltage drops, but I may have been better off with the smaller alternator. And if you have a smaller crankshaft pulley, you definitely want to go with the smaller alternator. The other thing to remember, I mentioned earlier, high output alternators need shorter belts due to the smaller pulley. Mechman customer service to the rescue again. They advised that I needed to go with a half inch shorter belt. They even looked up the part number for me. The belt was about 40 bucks and they had it in stock at the parts store down the street. Make sure you take some pictures or a video of your belt routing so that you know how to route the new serpentine belt when you put the new shorter belt on the vehicle. Now to learn more about aftermarket alternators, click on this video right here. And if you want to see the rest of my build, then hit the subscribe button right here and I will see you on the next adventure.